अरे ये ये कुछ जे हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी हेलो तो माता जी लंबे प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी योगेन लंबे हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी आई एम जस्ट ओपनिंग द प्रेजेंटेशन हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी मंडल प्रणाम नवया माता जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी चंद्र जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम प्रभु धन्यवाद प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम दीपिका माता जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम ओके हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा गोविंद सिंह हरे कृष्णा जो भी बोलूंगा आप तो जो करेंगे वो ही करेंगे ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंधस्य ज्ञानंजना शलाकया चक्षुरं मिलितं येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टं स्थापितं येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदामयं ददाति स्वापदांतिकं वन्दे हम श्री गुरु श्री युतापदकमलं श्री गुरुन वैष्णवं च श्री रूपं साग्रजातं सहगण रघुनाथं वितं तं सजीवं साधवैतं सावधूतं परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पाद सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्वित हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपति गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पतरुभ कृपा सिंधु इवच पति पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगु नंगाए थे गिरे यत्कृपा तम हम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिण परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर All right. Um, 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 we will discuss this, and we will have one more session on these last seven verses, because there is lot of discussion. Um, I mean, um, the the we are on twelve chapter. Um, acronym for this chapter is God. Arjuna asks, "Should I worship you in this form as Krishna?" Or should I worship you without a form? And then Krishna gave the answer. And last week we discussed different options. Krishna gave different options. The best is to absorb your mind in thinking of me. Second best is use your intelligence in serving me. This is if you cannot do uh, mind and intelligence fixed on me. all the time try to follow regulatory principles um so that one may become purified and eventually may come to the state where one can um fix the mind and intelligence on krishna um so someone may say i cannot follow regulatory principles okay then use your external senses to serve krishna 
um, um, washing parts and different services well I cannot do that okay then do your work but don't be attached to the results of your work if you do that that will help you to come to the stage of working doing something for Krishna that will give you the qualifications to start rendering devotional service and that will bring you to the point of spontaneously engaged in serving Krishna with one's internal senses somebody says I can't even do that okay then try some other things read some spiritual books try some get some knowledge some jnana um, 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 do some meditation and those kind of things so Krishna that shows um, Krishna is eager to include everyone and Krishna is giving everyone space that you come to me at, at your speed if we are convinced that um, we are spirit souls then we also know that this is not the only life we have if we begin our Krishna consciousness at whatever speed we may go that's all right um, next life we continue from there and it continues okay now this is the last section of today but requires two discussions devotees disposition or the qualities that pleases Krishna um, we 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 know some Siddhim Haritoshanam the goal of spiritual life is Haritoshanam to please Krishna but how can we please Krishna what is required to please Krishna that Krishna describes in this section okay so in this section Krishna describes total 31 qualities that pleases Krishna we will discuss few of them today and remaining next week okay um, so Advaishta Sarva Bhutana um, um, those who are not envious towards anyone um, including the envious um, those who are not envious um, um, they become dear to Krishna and we have already discussed this topic of envy before in the ninth chapter um, envy arise because um, I want to be the enjoyer when somebody else has something that i don't have that i want to enjoy then i will become envious of that person so really the root cause of envy is that uh, um, i am the center i am the enjoyer everything is meant for my pleasure um, um, and envy acts based on um, and we act on things that are important to us for example um, if wealth is important to me then those my dear and near ones who are wealthier than me I will become envious of them if position is important to me then those whom I know get a higher position I'll become envious of them if chanting is important to me then those who are chanting more rounds or who are more absorbed in chanting I'll become envious of them if guru is important to me then those who got guru who are equal to me but they got guru then I'll become envious of them so envy is based on our priorities what's important to me um, um, I should get it Envy. that's why envy can be spiritual or material <coughs> mm. And then there is Maitra. Maitreya is friendly to all. <coughs> friendly to all. Um, um, in this material world, people are friendly to those who surrender to them, who, who do whatever they say. Um, so they become friendly. And people become uh, um, envious of those who disobey them who don't listen to them who speak against them so um, some are 
my friends and some are my enemies this is a material conception of life this arises because of ego those who satisfies my ego they become my friend those who go do, those who don't satisfy my ego they become my enemy that's not being saintly a saintly person is friendly to all um it is said that the six goswamis of vrindavan um they were disciples of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu they were friends to those who would respect them and they were friends to those who were harsh at them or who were very envious people they were uh, friends to all um when a person becomes free from ego um then he then he is equal to all um, everyone is his friend just like krishna says in bhagavad gita sama ham sarva bhuteshu namya asti same na priya i am equal to all um, that is called maitra friendly to all so those saintly people independent of how others treat them if they if they in their heart respect them all um all um in favor or against favor towards us but the saintly person respect them all when krishna sees that behavior in us krishna become pleased now one reason why these points are so important to us is because we want to go deep in our krishna consciousness because we have experiences um if we go deep in our chanting hearing reading our sadhana then we become satisfied um we feel fulfilled within us um it is not up to us to go deep in our sadhana it depends upon krishna's mercy when krishna is merciful to us we can go deep in our spiritual life um our progress depends upon krishna's mercy krishna mercy comes when krishna is pleased with us and if we exhibit these qualities then krishna becomes pleased with us i have personally noticed in my life <clears throat> the situations which is very intolerable for me if i tolerate that i receive special mercy from krishna anything that is very very difficult for you to do but you know it's the right thing to do if you do it you receive mercy from krishna because you know it's like a child um, a child does something right you reward him likewise krishna rewards us and krishna's reward is reciprocation in our sadhana um um and krishna reward also means that i should be doing this thing more and more and more that's how krishna trains us um when i do something exhibit some quality which is not what krishna likes for example if i become angry at somebody then i will have to go through difficulty means krishna is displeased with me so then we learn that krishna doesn't like this so in this section that's why this chapter is so important every verse is so condensed in this um in this chapter and in this section in this chapter krishna describes what exactly pleases me if you follow or try to exhibit these qualities your growth and your advancement will be very steep um so then there is karuna karuna is uh, merciful to all merciful to all uh, a saintly people is merciful to all in fact uh, um 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 the sages question in shrimad bhagavatam the sages question in shrimad bhagavatam um that please tell us what should how can every living being what is good for all living being in this material world in this age of kali Uh, which is manda sumanda matayo in this age of kali people are misguided unfortunate always disturbed full of anxiety have very short lives um when people are in such miserable situation um what's good for them please tell those instructions from the scriptures which is good for everyone <clears throat> so a devotee is kind and merciful to all um um mm. okay okay then nirmamo nirmamo means free from the sense of proprietorship 
निर्ममो वेन वेन वी थिंक वी आर द प्रोपराइटर देन वेन समथिंग इज टेकन अवे फ्रॉम अस इट कॉजेज लॉट ऑफ एंगजाइटी इट कॉजेज लॉट ऑफ एंगजाइटी वेन वी थिंक वी आर द प्रोपराइटर देन वी वॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल we want to go things our way because i am the proprietor and uh, <clears throat> that creates uh, um, 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 that does not please krishna and then nirankara this is the fifth quality nirankara means free from false ego or identification with the body ahankar is ego nirankara is free from false ego now there is a short video on false ego so therefore manana api shrest prayegi madhusudana madhu klimam cha madhiriti krite vasubhe bhaktanam karmanam chaiva sudanam madhusudan so madhusudan means one who specifically destroys our false ego so false ego is sometimes compared to madhu madhu means honey honey has two qualities one quality of honey is it is very sweet and the second quality of honey which may not be so well known is that if you have sufficient quantity of honey it can be intoxicating it it will be intoxicating so similarly false ego is compared to honey why because all the false conceptions which we have about ourselves which makes us feel that we are so great i am so great and when people come and reinforce that false conception by telling us that you are so great and when we hear from others how great we are number 1 it sounds very sweet right ah you are so great you are so wonderful <laughs> we may deny but it sounds sweet and then if so many people keep saying the same thing then you start getting intoxicated like if so many are saying means democracy means majority so looks like everyone has a very good idea about my glories so it can get intoxicated so therefore krishna tries to save us and protect us from this intoxication first through his instructions which he gives and the second is through his own past times and those past times make any sane intelligent person step back and look at those past times and think okay who am i yeah here is the person who's really great but here is the person who has a genuine birth and genuine past times so looks like there is someone really great here and i should not be thinking about that myself so therefore manasapi sureshwara means even the greatest demigods like brahma indra and all were quite bewildered and humbled by krishna's descent so false ego um makes us um false ego can become very intoxicating if somebody comes and says uh, like goran prabhu says an example you are very great then if everybody keeps saying that you are very great then we may start thinking that actually maybe i am great and that is the intoxicating intoxicating effect of false ego um there is one story in shrimad bhagavatam of pondrak pondrak was a king and um, um, all the ministers they told pondrak that uh, actually you are real krishna <laughs> everybody told him actually you are real krishna um see um that's why you are the king all the people you fought with you defeated them um um everybody respects you you have all the good qualities so 
uh, when all the ministers were telling him like that, Pondarak actually started believing that, yeah, maybe I am great. Maybe, maybe I am Krishna. And then when he was fighting with Krishna, he told Krishna that uh, you are not Krishna. I am the real Krishna. And Krishna released Darshan Chakra and Pondarak, Pondarak died. So, um, like, so like that, um, when somebody glorifies, um, we may start to believe and think there is some truth in that. And that is actually false ego. So that's why um, um, it is described that glorification um, um, sometimes is very disturbing to the consciousness. Um, because we naturally want to be um, humble, but if somebody glorifies, then it simply acts as a disturbance to our consciousness. It doesn't help us to grow. That's why you see these saintly persons, um, these pure devotees, the spiritual master, they don't glorify much. And it is also described that if at all you want to glorify, glorification has to be genuine. It should come from your heart. If it comes from your heart, it will actually humble the other person. If you say, Prabhu, I'm grateful to you uh, for doing this seva, then uh, we may think this is my greatest fortune that I could serve that devotee. We'll not become proud because it's coming from their heart. But if it's a flattery, flattery means we have ulterior motives. Then we do flattery. If it is a flattery, it will simply disturb our consciousness. So devotee should not do flattery. Okay. Now, um, another sixth quality that pleases Krishna, sama dukha sukha, equal in happiness and distress. And this is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, Krishna is telling to Uddhav. Krishna is telling sometimes for no apparent reason one's body is attacked by cruel people or violent animals. At other times and in other places, one will suddenly be offered great respect or worship. One who becomes neither angry when attacked nor satisfied when worshipped is actually intelligent. So Krishna is telling who is intelligent. An intelligent person is when one is glorified, he is unaffected or when one is when one is ill treated he is unaffected and we see many many stories in the scriptures as are an example of this one great example is sukadev goswami sukadev goswami was the son of vedvyas he is the author of shrimad bhagavatam sukadev goswami um, would would was in a liberated state he would not even wear clothes when he would walk. And many villagers would mock him um, um, and think he is a madman. And Sukhadev Goswami was unaffected. And when he came, when he saw all the sages, including Ved Vyas, Narad Muni, and Maharaj Parikshit, when they saw Sukhadev Goswami, they gave him high seat and they all bore down to him. And Sukhadev Goswami was unaffected. So sometimes he was ill-treated. Sometimes he was given a lot of respect. He is liberated soul. We become disturbed when there is ego in the heart. That's when we become disturbed. Another example um, is Avanti Brahmana. Avanti Brahmana was a Brahmana from a village named Avanti. Mm. He was a, a landlord. Um, um, and uh, he was a very cruel person, actually, Avanti Brahmana. Um, somebody texted me. Voice is breaking. Okay, I will turn off my video. Uh, okay, let us try now. So there was this, yeah, there was this um, devotee named Avanti Brahmana, he would give loans to people and he was a very miserly person. He would not even um, um, buy any, um, he would not spend at all um, and people would not like him. 
so by the will of providence this avanti brahmana started losing all his wealth and uh, um, he became a beggar um, and um, 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 as as krishna took everything away from him um, he started becoming he was he was getting humbled and uh, he started taking interest in spiritual life and uh, he became a great devotee of the lord um, and after he became great devotee of the lord he left the home and he would walk by in villages like a mendicant and he would beg um, but because uh, uh, people from the previous um, life of avanti brahmana uh, people had uh, enmity towards avanti brahmana and um, they made the life of avanti brahmana as miserable as hell um, it is described uh, um, when avanti brahmana would walk people will throw stones at him um, and uh, um, people will criticize him with harsh words and if he get something to eat by any chance uh, uh, small boys will come and urinate on his plate so he was not even able to eat um, he his life people made his life miserable but avanti brahmana um, was neutral to them because he became a devotee of the lord and this is one verse that krishna says matra sparshas tu kontaya sitoshna shukha dukha da agama pai no nityas tam stitikshava bharata this is in second chapter um, krishna tells arjuna your relatives they are not um, you cannot kill them because they are spirit souls um, um no weapon um, made of fire earth or anything can touch them they are eternal um na hanyate hanye mane sharire hanye mane is destroyed hanye mane sharire when the body is destroyed na hanyate the spirit soul is never destroyed um so don't hesitate and fight but then the question may come that uh, um but still there is a loving connection there is a loving connection so um when they die there will be pain there will be pain um and then krishna says if you understand that they are spirit souls they cannot die still there will be pain because of losing their association and what do we do with that pain krishna says tolerate so from verse number 11 to verse number 30 krishna speaks the science of soul and this one verse the number 14th verse he introduces um he says if any happiness distress comes even after you having a spiritual consciousness you should tolerate them so a devotee should a devotee is same in happiness and distress then it that quality pleases krishna okay then another quality is uh, forgiving and tolerant um if we are forgiving um to those who um who try to criticize us or who harm us if we are forgiving to them then we become dear to krishna we become pleasing to krishna um there is a prayer by lord brahma in shrimad bhagavatam 10th canto brahma ji prays तथेनु कंपम सुसुमिक्षमानो भुंजान एवात्म कृतम विपाकम ऋद्वाग वपूर्व वितदम नमस्ते जी वेद यो मुक्ति पदे सदाय भव सो ब्रह्मा प्रेस अम इफ एनी डिफिकल्टी कम्स इन वंस लाइफ एंड इफ ही सीज अम दैट डिफिकल्टी इज हिज ओन कर्मा कमिंग बैक टू हिम हिज ओन कर्मा कमिंग बैक टू हिम um and in that difficulty he offer humble obeisances to the supreme lord that person becomes liberated in this life so one must be convinced that if somebody is giving me trouble then that is because i gave trouble to somebody in 
possible in this life only. And if you are sincere, Krishna will help you to see because you treated that person like that, because you were like that, this is coming back to you. And one who can have that vision, um, they can easily forgive because they know um, the other person is not at fault. It's my own karma coming back to me. Um, and when Krishna sees that we are forgiving and tolerant, um, um, then it pleases Krishna. And my spiritual master gives an example on forgiveness. If you don't forgive, um, if you don't forgive, then the person who suffers the most is we ourselves. We suffer the most. Uh, and he gives an example. It's like holding a hot iron rod with the intention to hit and harm the other person. But because we are holding it, the first thing that happens is our hands get burnt. So when we have vengeance, um, negative feelings towards somebody, um, we will not be able to chant properly and we will not be able to do any spiritual practice, we will be disturbed within us and the mind will take us over and we will keep meditating on what to do, what to say and we will keep justifying how I am rotten there, how I am right and they were wrong. And those, men, that, those mental torture will simply create a disturbance in our own consciousness. So we are the one who, who actually suffers. And also my spiritual master says, if we are forgiving, then when we will make mistakes, we will be forgiven also. But if we don't forgive, then there will be time when we make mistakes and others will hold vengeance towards us and that will make our life miserable. And that's again our karma coming back that I was not willing to let go. I was not willing to forgive. Then Santushta Satatam Yogi. Um, satisfied always in devotional service. So a devotee should be satisfied um, serving Krishna. Um, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prayed, Na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim, kavitam va jagadisha kamaye, mama janmani janmani shware, bhavatat bhakti avaitu kitwai. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prayed, Na dhanam, I don't want wealth. Na janam, I don't want followers or name and fame and prestige and distinction na sundarim i do not want opposite sex i don't want these things um what do i want mama janmani janmani shware bhavatat bhakti ahitu kitwai i want birth after birth to engage in your devotional service so so if we exhibit that consciousness then we are satisfied in devotional service um Okay, and then um, Yatatma. Yatatma is uh, self-controlled. And there is something on that. This is, um, this is a story from um, something that happens 500 years back on self-control. Um, let me explain the story first and then I will speak more on self-control. So, um, you all have heard about Lord Chaitanya, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born and brought up in uh, um, Navadvip and at the age of 24, Mahaprabhu took sannyas and he was residing in Jagannath Puri. And Lord Chaitanya told one of his devotee from Navadvip, his name was Shivananda Sen. Shivananda Sen was a businessman and Mahaprabhu told Shivananda Sen um, whatever earnings you get from your business you use that to bring all the devotees from Bengal to Puri. So Shivananda Sen would do his business for 8 months and 4 months he would go and stay with Lord Chaitanya in Jagannath Puri. And he would use his wealth, you know, like there were hundreds of devotees who would go every year during the Chaturmas, the four month of rainy season to associate with Lord Chaitanya. So 
somebody has to arrange for their food somebody has to arrange for their stay somebody has to pay the to to tolls when they would cross the villages and cities they had to pay the toll taxes uh, 500 years back so somebody has to incur all these expenses so shivananda sen would incur expenses for all hundred of devotees and his service was vaishnav seva so that all devotees can go and meet lord chaitanya so shivananda sen was taking a group of devotees and um, 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 one year Nityananda Prabhu who is actually Balramji um, was also going with the devotees to meet Lord Chaitanya and uh, very nice a very this is a very instructive story um, one night Shivananda Sen could not arrange accommodation for Nityananda Prabhu um, like the place to stay Nityananda Prabhu became very angry that why you didn't arrange accommodation for me and Nityananda Prabhu kicked Shivananda Sen um, and Nityananda Prabhu cursed Shivananda Sen that may all your five children die now this seems very uh, very difficult situation very difficult situation um, he kicked him and he said let all your five children die and as soon as Shivananda Sen's wife heard it his wife started crying because this is a curse from Nityananda Prabhu now we have to understand this story um, from the right perspective Nityananda Prabhu is actually Balaram and Nityananda Prabhu, um, um, he was an avadut. Uh, in fact, he would never, he would sleep under different trees. He never have a place of residence. Uh, um, he would just travel and do Kirtan's whole night with his devotees. So Nityananda Prabhu is a traveling saint. Um, but how can he become angry uh, for not having a stay or for the night when he never have any stay? None of the nights he have stayed. So this is because Nityananda Prabhu wanted to glorify Shivananda Sen. Actually, um, whenever the Lord put devotees into difficulty, um, it's it actually glorifies the devotees more. So we have to hear the story from the right perspective. So Shivananda Sen wife cried, um, and Shivananda Sen see the reaction of Shivananda Sen. Shivananda Sen told uh, uh, Nityananda Prabhu, my Lord, how fortunate uh, yogis uh, and transcendentalists are doing meditation for so many um, thousands of years. Still, they cannot get the dust off your lotus feet. And today you are so kind that... Uh, you have bestowed that mercy upon me. So that was the consciousness of Shivananda Sen. In other words, Shivananda Sen could, was self-controlled. Shivananda Sen didn't become angry when the situation um, could have made him angry. He, he tolerated that urge. And his consciousness was so great that he was seeing good even in that situation. Krishna consciousness is about consciousness. Um, in every situation, what is our thought process? That defines how much advancement spiritually we are making in our life. Um, naturally, none of the sons died. Nothing happened. Uh, but just the but just the consciousness of Shivananda Sen was glorified. Um, another thing is also Shivananda Sen was so pleased to receive the dust from the feet of Nityananda Prabhu, and he thought today Nitai has accepted me as a servant. Uh, today I feel blessed that uh, Lord Lord thought of me as a servant. So I'm blessed like that. So sometimes uh, somebody may speak something or act in a way that may agitate us. 
if we can control ourselves and don't become angry in that situation then we are the winner um, that is success um, that instance pleases Krishna if we can control our emotions that pleases Krishna that also includes all other type of self-control whether it is um, controlling ourselves from not eating foodstuffs which are not conducive controlling ourselves when lust attacks and not giving into demands of it or pride or envy they all come under this self-control so when we act on self-control then Krishna becomes pleased with us. Then there is Dhir Nishche. Dhir Nishche is determined. Um, and uh, my Arpito Mano Buddha is mind and intelligence fixed on me. Determination is very important uh, for those who want to make progress in their spiritual life. Determination. Um, and very good example we see here is uh, um, Madhas Dhruva. Um, Maras Dhruva, now, um, Maras, Dhru, Maras Dhruva um, was angry um, because his father didn't allow him to sit on his lap. And Maras Dhruva wanted a kingdom greater than his great grandfather. And when he consulted with his mother, his mother said, Well, whatever you desire, you go to Rindavan and uh, you pray to lord vishnu and lord vishnu may give it to you um, um, and then he left now here is a point um, he left he met narad muni he started chanting the mantra om nam bhagavate vasudevaya in vrindavan now here is the point um, we may start we may become enthusiastic in our spiritual life uh, um, because of some circumstance but to be able to continue requires determination um, that it is very easy to start something when the emotions are high um, because that is a that is mode of passion when we become passionate we want to do something and we start something but the greatness of Maras Dhruva now definitely his his pain and his anger toward his father and the situation melted down after two three days uh, but his determination to worship lord vishnu continued um, um, so today we may become very um, someday we may feel very inspired and we can start chanting eight rounds ten rounds sixteen rounds or more um, and we may continue but to be able to do it day after day requires determination and when we show our determination to progress to make advancement um, not one or two days month after month year after year then krishna becomes very pleased with us um, lord vishnu did not appear to Dhruv maharaj day one or day two uh, six months strong devotional service and then lord vishnu appeared to because he was pleased so when we start our devotional service it may take some time before lord actually reciprocates with us how much time depending upon your sincerity um, what weakens our determination krishna says in bhagavad gita those who are too attached to sense gratification Resolute determination for devotional service does not take place. So when we are too attached to sense gratification, that weakens our determination. In fact, if we are too attached to sense gratification, then even while chanting, we cannot absorb ourselves in Krishna. Our chanting will be very distracted. And the cause of distractions in chanting is our um, attachments and attachments weakens our determination um, yet at the same time if you just 
somehow or other keep pushing yourself to do more and more devotional service your determination will increase naturally um radhesham prabhu says that when we come to krishna consciousness chanting one round is also very difficult for us but then after some time we may be chanting 16 rounds so uh, just by chanting one round and chanting 16 rounds is not so difficult for us anymore so we have got that much determination because of the beginning determination to chant one round so do what you can do something small that will naturally grow but don't give a break um, just keep doing that just keep doing that um um the test will come and the biggest test is time uh, test will come in a form of time um, can we maintain our enthusiasm over a period of time um and if you can pass that test of time then you become um um then you further you advance further you advance further so determination is very pleasing to krishna and then um yasman nodvi jate loko lokan nodvi jate chaya um no one is agitated by him and he is not agitated by anyone so this is another quality that please that pleases krishna very much is when our actions and behavior don't agitate others don't agitate others the way we speak and talk the way we behave um um the way yeah the way we act our our uh the way we think um our, our body language when everything is done in a way that we are not agitating to others uh, then we receive mercy of krishna but when we act in a way um, um that disturbs others that causes distress to others then krishna becomes displeased with us um um and then we lose mercy of krishna so there is a um nice example of the six goswamis of vrindavan um in a in a song it is described krishna kirtana gana nartana paro prema amritam bho nidhi dheera dheera jana priya priya karo निर्मत्सरो पूजितो श्री चैतन्य कृपा भरो भुवि भुवो भारा वहंतारको वन्दे रूप सनाथ नारगुयुगो श्री जीव गोपालको दे आर जस्ट लाइक the ocean of love of godhead and they are popular both with the gentle and with the ruffians because they were not envious of anyone um so it says dheera adhira jana priyo so these six goswamis they were dear priya uh, jana priyo they were dear to both who are dheeras and who are adhiras in other words they acted with kind people and they acted with harsh people in such a way that they pleased both of them um um nirmat sarao nirmat sarao pujito and they they were not envious of anyone they were not envious to those who were kind to him and they were not envious of those who were harsh to him and they would treat everybody in such a way that it is not agitating to others and that's why they were very dear to everybody um good and bad people um so whatever they do they were all pleasing to everyone and they are fully blessed by lord chaitanya thus they are engaged in missionary activities meant to deliver all the conditioned souls in the material universe so those people who are very sincere in their sadhana 
but they are not very well behaved they cannot serve krishna and they cannot serve the society because they are not well behaved but those people who are very good in their sadhana and who are well behaved those who have both the qualities together they can actually become an instrument in serving krishna because it is very important to serve lord chaitanya is uh, um, our behavior should not be agitating to others okay <clears throat> this is the last slide we will cover today um, um, then harsa marsha bhayot vegar or equi poised in joy and distress fear and fear fear and anxiety so we discuss happiness and distress likewise joy and distress when we go through difficult times when when we go through fear when we go through anxiety if we can stay neutral in a way undisturbed then we become um, dear to krishna uh, one very good example i mean our scriptures are full of such examples who were attacked with uh, um uh, physical torture mental torture verbal torture and they remain equipoised uh, full of full of examples a uh, very good example is prahlad maharaj who was being um, tortured by his father uh, but he remained respectful to his father in that situation another example is maharaj ambarish who was being attacked by a fiery demon created by durvasa muni um but he surrendered his uh, um body um to krishna um, saying that my lord whatever you like i am yours um there is a beautiful song by um um bhakti vinod thakur um it says ma ma na sa de ho ge ho जो की छुमो अर पीलू तुआ पदे नंद किशो मानसा देहो गे हो मानसा माय माइंड देहो माय बॉडी गे हो माय फैमिली जो की छुमोर वट एवर इज माइंड वट एवर इज माई बॉडी माइंड और फैमिली जो किचू मोर अर पीलू तुआ पदे टूडे आई सरेंडर टू यू अर पीलू सरेंडर आई ऑफर इट टू यू अर पीलू तुआ पदे टू योर लोटस फीट नंद किशोर ओ सन ऑफ नंद महाराज ओ कृष्णा वट एवर इज माइन आई ऑफर इट टू यू and then the next is um mukto ya sacha me priya of course this is not a quality but krishna is describing um after every verse krishna says such a devotee is very dear to me so krishna is urging us to act on these qualities we should actually read them from bhagavad gita and we should read them regularly because when you read it regularly every day trust me we will fail in exhibiting these qualities every day it will happen uh, just because of our conditioning and uh, our all the anarthas within us but when we read it reminds us and then we bhagavad gita acts as a mirror so we can see ourselves more deeply and then it will impel us to act in a right direction so we should read these qualities very regularly and then anapiksha apeksha is um apeksha means um um anapeksha means you are neutral apeksha karna matlab kisi ka side lena you take somebody side anapeksha means you don't take any one side um you are um uh, you are neutral in all circumstances good or bad devoid of all expectations from his um work yeah then we can become neutral um 
when we when we have certain expectations um, that will cause uh, um, um, uh, that will force us to take sides because um, we have attachment somewhere then suchi suchi means pure or clean um, and then the last point of today is daksha daksha means expert or skillful in all situations so this is the last point for today um, a devotee of the lord is daksha daksha means he is expert he is expert in everything especially he is expert in how to deal with situations in life he is expert very good example is raghunath das goswami raghunath das goswami was expert in dealing with people um, in fact um, when he was uh, when he was a boy a young boy um, um his father and uncle were landlords and uh, uh, they did some i mean long story short um 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 actually his father and uncle they acted inappropriately and uh, they stole some money from the government so the minister came to know and he wanted to uh, punish the father and uncle but he could not find the father and uncle so the minister who was envious of of these people he kidnapped their son and name of their son is this raghunath das goswami so raghunath das goswami was in prison he was a young boy by the minister and there is a description in chaitanya charitamrita how raghunath das goswami was so expert in uh, dealing in that situation and although this minister was very envious of his father and uncle um he settled the dispute so that's a that's a quality of uh, um daksha of ex expertness he 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 told them like uh, he told the minister like you are like my father and uh, um um i um so when he heard with so much love and affection he presented in such a way um, you should trust me i will go and i will ask my father to get the coins and i will give it to you and they will respect you and i will increase your uh, reputation and something something like that he said in a very pleasing way and it melted that minister so he was expert another situation is in this particular instance um, um when ashwadhamma uh, he killed the five sons of draupadi and draupadi was um, crying intensely arjuna told draupadi that uh, don't tie your hairs till you take till you don't tie your hairs and don't take bath till you stand on the head of this demon ashwatthama and i will go now and cut off the head, head of ashwatthama and bring it to you to solace you so it was a very um um emotionally intense situation and arjuna went with krishna they grabbed uh, ashwatthama um, and they brought him to draupadi um, krishna told arjuna kill him um, draupadi told arjuna that he son of a brahmana uh, forgive him um, i went through lot of suffering because i lost my son i don't want to see his mother going through the same suffering by killing him kunti told don't kill him yudhishthira maharaj said don't kill him bhima said don't kill him uh, bhima said kill him so they were and arjuna was confused whom to listen whom not to listen even krishna is telling telling him telling to kill him so krishna was so expert and arjuna understood the signal of krishna that he acted in such a way that uh, um, everybody was satisfied so a devotee of the lord when he acts in an expert way in a way that everybody is pleased then krishna becomes pleased with them everybody should be pleased in the, in that way we should act okay i would like to end here and see if there are any questions hari krishna prabhu ji dhanyavad pranam the question is prabhu uh, 
uh, I think you shared that we should not be flattery. It becomes very difficult to understand when we are becoming flattery and when we are becoming uh, really smart and aware of the situation and doing something that pleases everybody and pleases the Lord. So, uh, is your you question I, between being expert and flattery? Yes, I mean, um, it, it's very hard to distinguish when uh, um, we are attempting to uh, do something like this that pleases everybody. Hmm. Well, Prabhu, I see, I see where you are coming from. Um, usually, flattery is done for uh, um, um, one's ulterior motives. Usually, um, 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 if it is needed in the service of Krishna, if you do it, Krishna will take care of it. Hmm. Hmm. If it is, if that is the only situation needed uh, in the service of Krishna, um, um, like um, somebody may be very disturbed and you tell them Prabhu I am very happy with everything that you are doing and the way you are serving although there are flaws but time place circumstances you say like them say like that to encourage them and then at the right time you correct them so in the service of Krishna if it is sometimes done that's okay uh, but sometimes it is also seen that some people have the habit to keep flattering for nothing does it make sense Yes, yes, Anna, yes, that's that's not really good. Yeah. Mm. Okay, anyone else has any other question? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, I have a question like from the older chapters. Like, uh, Prabhuji, there are four vanashrams, right? So, um, like, and each vanashram uh, has is uh, can be uh, like told in and uh, can be uh, can come under like some modes like suppose uh, brahmanas can come under mode of goodness is that correct Prabhuji? brahmanas are primarily under mode of goodness yes yes uh, so uh, Prabhuji, vaishyas are in the mode of passion and both ignorance also yes okay so uh, so like um, in your one of your like uh, previous lecture you said that uh, the best example for Vaishyas can be the Gopalas, right? Well, okay, continue the question. Uh, yeah, Prabhuji. Uh, so, like, um, maybe I missed some points or something. So, uh, for Brahmana, uh, the best example can be Garbhmuni, right, Prabhuji? Yes, yes. And for Kshatriya, it, uh, it can be Nand Maharaj. Because he was the king also. Yes, Prabhuji. So, uh, for Vaishyas, the Gopalas are, uh, can be correct or not? Well, uh, I was giving those examples in a way to say that um, Vaishya does not mean that they are lower, nor is uh, Shudra, nor is Chhatya, nor is Brahmana. If they all can use their nature in serving Krishna, then it is perfect and with that res respect i said even in vrindavan we see all these natures uh, but actually they are not they are transcendental they are not in ignorance and passion the reason that example is given is the um, the context is usually people discriminate based on nature okay did I make sense? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. So, uh, Prabhuji, can you give any, is it any, there is any example for Shudras? Oh, Shudras, they serve all the other classes. They, um, whatever they are asked to, they, they do. Like they assist the Brahmanas in sacrifice, they assist Kshatriyas in ruling the kingdom, they assist uh, um, Vaishyas in farming and cow protection. So, they serve under them. 
so prabhuji can we uh, take like uh, uh, kubja as the example for shudra we can it like not correct well um, i wo- i wouldn't conclude it but from the fact that uh, she was serving the king with fragrant oils it can be seen like that um, but i would generally for a general sense avoid um, using brajwasis in this category but just to give an example and to show that um, they are all, none of them is lower i said i i gave that example but kubja is also glorified as a pure devotee of krishna okay prabhu yeah, yeah, i was a little confused like you know yeah. because um, yeah we cannot like uh, uh, classify really any brajwasi in the category of shudra yes yes yes, yes. that's yeah. why i was little hesitant myself also yes prabhu ji i was confused with that only point because we really cannot categorize because uh, brajwasi is really all the pure de- they are the pure devotees of krishna yeah yeah so yeah thank yeah. you so much prabhu ji thank you dipika yeah prabhu ji so i want to say something here um so maybe um durudana's brother dushasan can be a good example for shudra he was blindly following his brother whatever uh, his uh, or, um uh, durudana is telling he is just following it without um, applying his knowledge mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so and um, so there was lack of knowledge also and um, so like uh, the lack of so tamas gun was higher and um, uh, rajagun was again was not there so he can be a good example of uh, mm-hmm. shudra okay so yeah. i don't know yeah yeah now see um, chatriyas by principle if you see in kali yoga shri prabhupada said everybody is a shudra kalo shudra sambhave because chatriyas are meant to take instructions from true chatriyas they take instructions from brahmanas and they lead the city they lead the nation according to scriptures uh, under guidance of pure devotees of the lord nobody does that in today's world everybody is leading for sense gratification likewise um 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 vaishyas um, or shudras they all in a true sense in the vedic culture they all act as per injunction like vaishya serves under uh, chatriya uh, the ruler and chatriya maintains them so there is a harmonious relationship they have a particular nature but they use everything in service of the lord but today we don't see such existence in a way so it's it's bewildering so that's why scripture says kalo shudra sambhave kali yoga everybody is like a shudra because a shudra is uh, his main aim is sense gratification and that's what we see of every person whether he is ruling or vaishya is they are all running for the same purpose instead of serving krishna is it all right prabhu ji uh, can i like uh, that arises like another like doubt so where can we put kansa in kshatriya or in like in other any other well because he was a kshatriya right because he was a king yeah he was kshatriya at the same time because he was doing everything for his sense gratification he was shudra so he shudra too so he is all mixed in kaliyaga it's not clear there is no clear mm. distinction that's why scripture says kaliyaga everybody is a shudra yes is that all right yes prabhu ji okay we end here vancha kalpa taru bhesha kripa sindhu be eva cha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnu be namo namo ananta koti vaishnu vrinda ki jay shri prabhu hari krishna prabhu hari krishna prabhu ji dandavat pranam dandavat pranam